What if I tell you that fungi are so widely distributed on our planet that you can find them pretty much everywhere? Yes, really. In fact, you might not even have to step out of your house in order to see one. The greenish black patches on that two-week-old bread? Fungi. That bottle on the kitchen shelf which is marked activated yeast? Fungi. The mushrooms growing on those damp logs in your garden? You know it. Fungi. And you've probably noticed by now that they're wildly diverse too. Each of these fungi has its own set of unique features. And using these features, scientists were able to classify them over the years. But the thing is that in all this time, fungi classification has changed dramatically. Many scientists nowadays refer to newer, more advanced systems of classification. So in this video, that's what we're going to do as well. We're going to talk about some of the major phyla in kingdom fungi and their distinct characteristics. And while we are doing so, we'll try to stick to the more recent versions of fungi classification rather than the older ones. So let's get into it. The first phylum we have over here is Chytridiomycota. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't get that pronunciation right the first time. And neither did I know that this phylum existed up until I actually started looking into it. And it turns out that this phylum houses all of the simplest, most primitive fungi to ever exist on our planet. Most of these chytrids, that's what you call the members of this phylum, most of this chy these chytrids are unicellular organisms that are often found in water bodies or wet soils. And like every other uh, fungi, they also have chitinous cell walls and exhibit saprotrophic or parasitic nutrition. However, what truly sets chytrids apart from the rest of the fungi are their uh, motile zoospores. The spores that the chytrids produce, they're called zoospores, and each of them come equipped with a flagellum like this. And using this flagellum, the zoospore can uh, actively move around or swim around all on their own. And mind you, no other fungal spore can do this. They are the only motile spores to exist and chytrids are the ones that can produce these spores. A very famous example or a very famous chytrid is this organism right here, which is called Allomyces. Next up, we have the zygomycetes, members of the phylum zygomycota. And we've already come across a zygomycete before. Remember the stale moldy bread at the beginning of this video? Well, the fungus that grows on stale bread, it's called the common bread mold. And that is scientifically called Rhizopus stolonifer, which is this fungus right over here. So if you take a piece of that moldy bread and place it under a microscope, this is what you're going to see. Now, the most fascinating thing about zygomycetes is how they reproduce sexually. Normally, they reproduce asexually with the help of something called sporangiospores, which are these spores that are formed inside a structure called a sporangium. You can actually see a sporangium right over here. So this bulb-like structure here, this is the sporangium. Sporangium. And inside of this is where the sporangiospores are formed. And sporangiospores are the way to go uh, normally uh, when things are fine. But when the environmental conditions become unfavorable, the fungus or these fungi, they resort to sexual reproduction. That is when sexual reproduction takes place. So let's take a look at this process. So during sexual reproduction, what really happens is that two compatible haploid hyphae will start extending towards each other till their tips touch, kind of like this. And the minute the tip touches, what happens is that it kind of walls off a section or a portion of this tip. So let's say it starts to wall off somewhere here by building, uh, by forming something called a septum, which you can think of it like a partition. So this is a septum. I'll just write it down over here. So it starts to wall off a certain section by forming this septum. And 
when this once this partition is done or this walling off is done what will happen is that everything in this portion right over here will fuse together even the nuclei now over here i have you can see that there are only two two nuclei but usually what happens like uh, this is just an image that i've drawn but uh, in real life like in uh, nature when this fusing happens there are many haploid nuclei uh, which are present in this area depending on where this uh, wall of thing happens where the partition begins to appear so based on where the partition appears many haploid uh, nuclei are present in between or they are trapped in between this uh, section of the extension or the tips basically so now what happens these nuclei they will also fuse along with the tips so after all of the fusion what really happens what we get at the end of that is this zygospore so this uh, haploid nuclei will fuse with this haploid nuclei and give us this purple one and again the same thing happens with these two nuclei and we have two basically uh, diploid nuclei because the haploid nuclei they fuse right so in the end we finally have a zygospore which uh, contains multiple diploid nuclei now what happens after this this zygospore will eventually undergo meiosis and because of meiosis what will happen this diploid nuclei will become haploid nuclei because of the meiosis that happens and each of these haploid nuclei each of them separately will become a haploid spore and that is how uh, through sexual reproduction these haploid sexual spores are formed now this type of sexual reproduction where the tips of the hyphae fuse together to give the zygospore which eventually gives us a uh, haploid spores this entire process is called conjugation and because of this because of this conjugation process zygomycetes are often referred to as conjugated fungi moving on the third phylum on our list is ascomycota these fungi are characterized by the presence of something called a sci or an ascus an ascus is a sac like structure which contains the haploid sexual spores called ascospores so these bead like structures that you can see inside this sac like thingy so these are the ascospores inside the ascus and because of this sac like structure these fungi are also called sac fungi during sexual reproduction ascospores are formed inside thousands of ascii which in turn are found inside of a spore bearing structure called an ascos ascocarp now uh, this so basically what happens these ascospores they are formed inside this ascus or inside the ascii and these ascii is in turn found inside something called the asco carp which is a spore bearing structure so inside this you will find the ascii and inside the ascii you will find the ascospores now the process of sexual reproduction goes something like this plasmogamy or fusion of cytoplasm takes place between two compatible haploid cells and the fused cell enters a dikaryotic stage where the nuclei the haploid nuclei they remain free eventually these nuclei will also fuse that means karyogamy will take take place and we will end up with a diploid zygote inside the ascus this zygote will further undergo meiosis and that will give us the haploid ascospores these ascospores are then released into the environment and they end up germinating at suitable places ascomycetes also undergo asexual reproduction by producing uh, asexual spores called conidia ascomycetes are incredibly uh, helpful to us as well especially commercially and a very important example of that is yeast remember how we talked about uh, dry activated yeast being something that we can find in our kitchen so we use yeast to uh, yeast in a variety of different things like baking brewing fermenting wine and a bunch of different things so yeast is an ascomycete which is extremely important to us other examples of ascomycetes include truffles uh then there are morels 
Now, these are treated as delicacies uh, in different parts of the world. Then there's also uh, aspergillus, which is something you might have heard of, uh, uh, which is also uh, an ascomycete. So these are some examples of ascomycetes. The next major phylum is that of the mushrooms, aka phylum Basidiomycota. Basidiomycetes are easily recognized by their club-shaped spore-bearing structures called basidia. Now, there's only one structure here, so this will be a basidium. That's the singular form. And because of this club-shaped basidium or basidia, these uh, fungi are also called club fungi. Now, where will you find this basidium or where will you find all the basidia? You will find them on the gills of the mushroom. So these lines that you can see, these are the gills of the mushroom, which are found on the underside of the cap. And this whole protruding thing with the cap and everything, that is the fruiting body of the mushroom called the basidiocarp. So this entire thing, let's pick a different color. We can't really see it in here. So this entire thing, the protruding part of the mushroom, which is you know, out on the top of the soil that we can see, this is the fruiting body, which is called the basidiocarp. So that means the basidiocarp bears the basidia on the gills. Now inside each basidium, basidiospores, which are these sexual spores, by the way, they are produced. And these basidiospores, they are produced in uh, very similar to how the ascospores are produced. Now once these haploid basidiospores, they are uh, formed, they will be released into the environment from the basidioscarp and then they will germinate into new fungi. Now remember all mushrooms, toadstools, uh, then shelf fungi, then smuts and rusts, all these types of fungi, they belong to phylum basidiomycota. So they're all basidiomycetes. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't mention an asexual reproduction here, that's because usually all basidiomycetes reproduce sexually. So that's why we are not discussing about the asexual reproduction here. Now, these are just some of the major phyla which has been included in kingdom fungi now. That, that doesn't mean that these are the only phyla, by the way. There are other different phyla as well. For example, glomeromycota is one such phylum which is there in kingdom fungi, but one that we didn't really discuss here. Uh, this includes fungi which live in very close association with uh, plant roots. There's another group that you might have heard of called deuteromycetes, aka the imperfect fungi. You know, the fungi that do not show a sexual phase in their reproductive cycles at all. So those are the deuteromycetes. But the thing is that deuteromycota is not considered to be a true phylum. Why? Because their members are more closely, closely related to organisms from other phyla than each other. Let me explain this to you with an example. Aspergillus was earlier thought to be a deuteromycete. But after a lot of research and a lot of studies and molecular analysis, they finally found out that aspergillus is more closely related to ascomycetes rather than deuteromycetes. So that's a completely different phylum, right? Ascomycota. In fact, we, we literally wrote down aspergillus in uh, the lesson today under ascomycota. So that's how aspergillus was moved from deuteromycota to ascomycota. And that is why asco, um, that is why deuteromycota or deuteromycetes, they are not considered to be a true, uh, a true member or a true phylum for that matter. So you see, fungi classification is an ever-changing, ever-improving ordeal. It's not set in stone. Who knows that maybe a few decades from now, we'll have a completely new system of classification for all of these fungi. It is that dynamic.